Hi there. In this video, we are going to look at a new tool, OADATA, to perform OData assessments. This tool allows you to engage and perform penetration tests on an OData service, create different types of requests, export the fuzzing templates, which you can then use into your custom fuzzers if you are researching on OData protocol implementations. So let's uh, get started. So this tool accepts a service root URI, uh, which is the, the root URI of an OData service. So you to get started, you provide OData with the service root URI, click go. What it is going to do is it's going to retrieve the metadata document populate the service tree. Uh, let's see how it works out and all. So we are going to browse a read-only service. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I have used the OData service available from OData website, which is www.odata.org. So I copy this URL and paste into OData and click go. What OIData has done for me is it has retrieved the metadata document, analyzed it, created a request tree for me with, uh, uh, with a lot of request types that I can send to the OData service. Now let's see how a metadata document looks like before we go any further. <clears throat> so here, uh, this is the service root v URI which provided which we provided to OIDATA. Here you see uh, four different uh, three different types of feeds and the metadata document is available at the dollar metadata relative URI to the service root URI. So as proper part of the analysis, OIDATA would retrieve this document, analyze it and create that request tree. All right. So here, this is how the service tree looks like. Now let's look at the products. OData is a RESTful protocol and OIDATA tool also tries to reflect on the same and creates all the requests for every entity type as per the RESTful operations. So you have operations divided into create, read, update and delete. We are going to go to the read, which is the easiest thing to do to be able to see how it really works out. So if I click on a particular node, I will get a request in XML and JSON previews. We will see the prominent differences amongst XML and JSON when we are trying to create records. At this point of time, you would only see the difference when the response comes back. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to send a request to retrieve all products. I double click on the products and I send the request. The response will have all the products supported by the OData service. Now the OData protocol allows you to retrieve information till the individual properties of a particular entity type and this tool supports the same. For example, you can access the individual products by providing their uh, identifiers here. If you see, I clicked on a node and now I can provide an ID value and retrieve a single product. So I'll give a value one. Since it is of EDM type, it is of type EDM int 32. I can give it a value one once I create a new request. So I double click. There is a new request for me. I provide a value one and I send it over. You can see the response has only one product in it. Now let's say, for example, I want to retrieve only a particular property for a particular product. What I can do is I can double click, provide the value of the ID, which is the unique identifier for a particular product and I do a send. The response will have the ID value only. Now suppose you want to read a raw value of that 
product of the ID parameter or of the ID property. Double click it, provide a value and you're good to go. And you see the response, it has only the raw value of the ID. So this is important uh, to be able to drill down and access individual properties for granular access control tests. And that is why this entire tree exists here. Now the other operations that we have like create, update and delete would require access to a read write service. So let's go ahead and retrieve URL for a read write service. Now I'm going to copy this URI, paste it here and then I'm going to do a go. OIData reinitializes itself, creates all the requests and provides those to me. Now if you see, if I want to create product, <coughs> there are two types of requests. One is of XML and another is of type JSON. Now you will be able to appreciate the difference between the two. So the XML has to confirm to a particular schema that the OData version, protocol version supports and JSON uh, can be in the format that we have seen here. So let's create one particular product on the remote service. So the process will be same. I double click on the products and I get a request and I will provide the values here. Let's say ID, I give 10 test name, then test description. Now we see that release date is of type edm dot date time how does it look like we really do not know that so for purpose uh, to for the for the same purpose so that uh, we spend more time testing and less time figuring out how a particular data type looks like oi data comes with a data generator that can create different types of data for you so that you can directly provide in your test and send to the remote server so this is the data generator and this is how it looks like. <clears throat> we know that it was of type date time and I'm going to create one date time type of object, copy it out, provide here, which is the release date. I'm going to change it to 2012 and discontinued it let's say 2013 rating let's give 2 let's give price say 10 okay I'm going to send this request and you see the response it says that the re record was created and this is the title this is the summary and it was updated right now and these are the additional details right, so we have been able to create a record now let's go one step ahead and try to delete the same record. Let's see uh, the ID of the product was 10, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to first read the same record and then we're going to delete it. 10 and we send it over. We get the same product back with the test name, test description. Now we are going to delete the same product. We can send it over. Now you see the response is there is no content and we are going to try and read that value again. We send it and it's gone. Alright, so we have exercised create, read and delete. Now coming back to service operations. So the service operations would allow you to read different uh, would allow you to uh, execute the remote methods and retrieve the response. So the values that you send are uh, EDM data types and the return type can be a feed, it can be null, it can be a void or it can be individual record that is coming back. So let's say a product with rating 3. There are a lot of them. All right. 
Now let's look at some other features that OData Pro, OData provides. <coughs> uh, you look at there is a button here which allows you to load local metadata document and the reason why we <coughs> sorry about that it exists is that there may be scenarios uh, in which the OData service may not expose its service metadata document over the internet in those scenarios the client may provide you the metadata document out of band and you would really be required to just create and send those requests over in that scenario you can provide a service root URI here, load a local metadata document. For example, here I have a Northwind service and its metadata document. Double click that and do a go. So what happens here is the service metadata document is analyzed in context of the service root URI provided here. So any request that you create here and send over to the remote service is going to be created in the context of the remote OData service and it is really going to reduce the time that you have to create every request by hand so that's really a big benefit here then uh, let's try and see a couple of other settings that you have here OData provides uh, internet proxy support you can provide a proxy address and port and it would route all the traffic through that internet proxy. OData can work over SSL as well and it has uh, SSL certificate check disabled by default. So what that allows that uh, you to do is you can test your custom OData services which run on SSL without any fear of having certificate errors. And there is something called as additional HTTP headers this would allow you to add your custom headers to every request that is sent out. For example, there may be scenarios in which uh, OData requires you to provide some cookie or HTTP headers. Uh, for example, if the OData service is protected by basic authentication, in that scenario, you can add uh, any header here and that will be populated to every request you create. Let's say here I have added a new header which is cookie and I want this to go with every request from this point onwards. So I'll reset the state here and I'm going to click go again. So if I create a new request you will see that the header gets populated. Now uh, this is about, so far we have seen how to engage an OData service, create different types of requests, generate data. But what do I do if I really want to use my own custom fuzzer uh, for the OData service? OData supports that as well. It will allow you to export all the fuzzing templates outside and will you can then feed it to your own custom fuzzers. Let's say for example, you do a right click here and you say export templates you can export in xml or json and there are three different types of exports that you can do one is blank in the blank template what happens is all the values uh, are replaced uh, data uh, all the value types are replaced with question marks if let's export a couple of them so what i'm going to do is i'm going to export a blank xml And I am going to export a JSON with data type names. And I can also export one which is for pre populated data. All right, so we have three different types of exports here. Let's see all of them in a little bit more detail. <clears throat> this, this, and this. These three is something that we've exported right now. So pre-populated data, it populates all the request properties with the data type. So for example, this was of int32. It will have that value. This is a string, and the description is again a string. Then there is a release date associated with it. 
then discontinued date and a double here which is 6871 and then you have all the requests to retrieve particular ID product and then value so on and so forth uh, update requests with if match uh, header which is required to be able to update any individual record in the database for data and for other entity types like categories and then you at the end you will have suppliers and then also the service operations <coughs> and the JSON you have the data type associated with each property you can see that write your fuzzer that will go through it retrieve these values replace them with your desired values on what you want to send and then engage the OData service and there is the blank template in which everything is replaced by a question mark the rest is the same as we saw earlier this is for exporting and then while engaging an OData service also you can choose a template of your liking so for example you can do a pre-populated data it will give you the data uh, pre-populate the data for you you can do uh, data type names so you can see it is like EDM int32 and the asterisk here indicates that this is uh, the key for uh, that will be used to identify an individual database record and then uh, you can also create a JSON and say blank you can send this and engage the remote OData service. OData, uh, OData tool also has a comprehensive white paper that explains all its functionalities in detail so it's available with the, pro uh, with the tool download it's around 12 pages in length and thank you for watching this video